for a fact, gluten is the number one cause of inflammation in the body, right? Yeah. And then just causing havoc. And especially if you've got celiac, okay, then you have to avoid it. But even if you're just normally healthy, it's just causing such destruction that we're seeing so much inflammation. My advice and Shivani's advice is wherever you can, avoid gluten. Welcome to The Search for Wellness, a podcast dedicated to discovering the path to a healthier, more fulfilling life. Join us on this heartfelt journey as we share inspiring stories, insightful conversations, and practical tips to nurture your mind, body, and spirit. Shivani Shah is a pharmacist who is now practicing functional medicine, dedicated to helping individuals achieve optimal health through personalized and holistic approaches. With a deep understanding of the intricate connections between the body systems, she focuses on identifying and addressing the root cause of health issues rather than just treating the symptoms. Today, we're excited to delve into the world of functional medicine with Shivani and gain insight into how it can transform our approach to health and wellness. And I would also like to state that Shivani is a really, really dear friend of mine. So I'm really excited to have her here today. So welcome, Shivani. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm so grateful for this. Today's like two girlfriends just having a chat about stuff that they're so <laughs> passionate about because we're both very passionate about functional medicine. And every time we're together, that's all we talk about because we relate to so much and Dr. Joe, obviously, Dr. Joe Dispenza. <laughs> so I would like you to start by just explaining to people what is functional medicine? So functional medicine is more than just the absence of disease. Health is more than just the absence of disease. Functional medicine has actually been around for a really long time, but it's only now that it's finally gained more popularity and, you know, it's gained its recognition as well in the world. So how is it different from conventional medicine? Well, we use different testing. We, um, it's, not con it's not conventional, nor is it alternative. It's like a mixture of both. And it actually looks at the human body as a whole, not just different organs. So it's a systems-based biology. And you usually or often find people go to a functional medical practitioner because they want to find the root cause of the problem, right? Correct. Yeah. So it's evidence based. It's scientific and it looks at the root cause of the problem. And who would you say needs a functional medical practitioner? So anyone who's had a chronic condition, anyone who's had an illness that's become so chronic that they just can't. They've been to conventional doctors and everything they've tried has not been able to benefit them. So someone with Hashimoto, someone with eczema, um, asthma, psoriasis, allergies, anyone with rheumatoid arthritis, so autoimmune conditions, diabetes, uh, metabolic syndrome as well, which is diabetes, cardiovascular conditions, high blood pressure, obesity. And then there's another like stem of functional medicine, which is longevity medicine, where you know you want to try and live longer, but in a very healthy way as well. So there's lots of different aspects, but actually anyone can benefit from functional medicine because you're actually going in and you're becoming healthier. You're learning about how your body works so that you can actually become healthier, implement healthier lifestyles into your life, life, lifestyle and into your family's lifestyle as well. When, when you say chronic condition, mm -hmm. um, but can functional medicine also help with acute conditions? Because I know that with, with what I understand is that, you know, oftentimes conventional medicine has failed us when it comes to chronic conditions. However, you know, it, it helps us, especially in a situation where it's an acute, you know, broken arm or a cut or a surgery or something like that. But can functional medicine work maybe not against, but like together with conventional in a of course it can. I yeah. mean, I think medicine, modern medicine is amazing. You know, if it weren't for medicine, acute like acute conditions, we would be, you know, not having the the healthcare that we do. So, I have to give it to medicine that it's amazing what they can do. But right now because we're seeing so much illness, chronic illness, due to our lifestyles mostly, you know, a collective modern lifestyles, which is why functional medicine is probably best for chronic illnesses. It is probably best for chronic yeah. illnesses. And what kind of people have you seen, like, like okay. from this type of people you've been seeing? So I've had patients with long COVID who mm -hmm. the doctors did not really know what to do with. 
So I've been treating them and they're, you know, a lot of patients with long COVID have had a lot of fatigue. So I've actually been working on their mitochondria, which is your energy center, energy centers in the cells. Um, rheumatoid arthritis as well, which is an autoimmune condition. Metabolic syndrome, so high blood pressure, diabetes, high, you know, all those sort of insulin resistance, looking at that as well. I've been doing some fertility work as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, and that's been very interesting, and we've had really good results. Um, IBS as well, multiple sclerosis, which is another autoimmune condition. So H. pylori, treating H. pylori in children. H. pylori in children? Yeah, okay. it's very common. So it's becoming, I mean, we, we all have H. pylori in our body, but when it goes out of what it should be, that's when you start getting the symptoms. And H. pylori is quite an invasive organism that can actually affect, it can get into, you know, it can hide in the crypts in your gut. It can, you know, get into your vagus system as well. So it's quite dangerous. And like, where do you get, like, how, why does, why is it so prevalent, H. pylori? So it normally lives in the human population, but sometimes it just grows, you know, out and just becomes larger in population so you get a bit of dysbiosis and that's when you need to start treating it okay and uh, you spoke about mitochondria can you explain what that is actually what is the mitochondria so the mitochondria are actually like energy cells so there are your little factories that are in every single cell of your body in your eyes in your skin cells in your gut you know all the organs in your gut and what they do is we take in food as energy and we also take in oxygen. So then that is converted from the electron transport chain into ATP. And ATP is what is giving us energy, what is driving you, what is giving you that healthiness, you know, and giving you. So if you don't have enough ATP, you get fatigue. If you're feeling really low, tired, if you've got brain fog, that all could be, you know, contributed to having fewer mitochondria, your mitochondria not working properly, mm -hmm. so things like that. But mitochondria are essentially what you need to function. And as we age, they actually decline as well. So we do need to be eating well to make sure that our mitochondria are, you know, at the level we want them to be at. What should we be eating to make sure that they're at that level? So lots of B vitamins proteins but just ensuring that we're having a really good healthy balanced diet the mm -hmm. good fats you know the proteins the carbs and lots of b vitamins naturally found as well where do you find your b vitamins naturally so you can be having lots of green vegetables mm -hmm. um i like everyone to be you know having their plant-based foods as well i think it's so important to be having lots of plants a, vo a wide variety of plants and here in kenya we're so lucky that we get so many different plants we have such you know? diverse soil we here. really do we have yeah. it we're, we're super lucky because we can have avocados we can have almonds we can have you know the nuts the macadamia nuts which are so rich so good for you they're actually the best nut to be having even the oil from the macadamia oh, really? is super healthy yeah so is it then, high it's not high in cholesterol it's a good cholesterol okay yeah interesting and you can actually make macadamia milk now yes which is apparently really yummy which and is yummy because it's got that nutty yummy taste to it yes. yeah so it's a mm. perfect snack if you're if your child is not allergic to nuts yeah you can be having a couple a day yes Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know about macadamia nuts um, being so good for you. I'm definitely going to add that to my um, diet for sure. Super. Yeah. So as a functional medical practitioner, what kind of tests do you run? What do you do like when you see a patient? So if I come to you, what, what happens? So the functional tests are very different from the conventional testing. They're more in-depth and they're different. You don't really tend to get them when you go to a conventional doctor's lab, okay? Okay, so there's one test that I really like to use. I think that this is the gold standard for like, because I start working with the gut in most cases. So this is the Genova GI FX comprehensive stool test. And this test basically is a sample of your stool. You do it over three days or you could do it over one day. And what does it analyze? It analyzes gut dysbiosis, which is where there is an imbalance in the good bacteria and the bad bacteria which have overgrown in your gut, inflammation markers, digestive enzymes, um, parasites, fungal and candida overgrowth, um, pathogenic bacteria, healthy gut bacteria, 
and products of healthy gut bacteria, which is like short chain fatty acids, which are the superstars that you need in your gut as well. And it also looks at your leaky gut if you've got that or, you know, if you've got detox, what your detoxification is, is working like. What is leaky gut? So leaky gut is, so basically your gut is like a fishing net, okay? Mm -hmm. Just imagine this fishing net, you know, and you've got all these crisscrosses of the net. So leaky gut is, so this net is one cell thick and things basically cannot cross from what you've eaten from your gut into the bloodstream. But once you get leaky gut, so once you're eating badly, you know, you're having too many refined oils, you've got toxin exposure, these holes in the net tend to get bigger, so then you've got things mixing in with the blood and that's when you start seeing inflammation, allergies, because all these things were not supposed to be in the blood. And then they, they get absorbed from the uh, small intestines into, yeah. the, into, into, into the gut, right? Yeah, so the small intestine yeah, is, yeah. Part, is part of the gut. And because I know that for a fact, gluten is the number one cause of inflammation in the body, right? And just eradicating gluten from your diet can solve so many problems yet in today's society and in today's world the amount of gluten we are exposed to is not normal it's not normal to be feeding your child bread and chapati and all of this stuff made out of gluten every single day because that is obviously creating havoc in your body so what's happening is that um, the new uh, wheat that we have right now that we're breeding is a shorter dwarf wheat. Yeah. You know, we're breeding it and it's containing a lot of gliadin, which is the protein that contains the gluten. So like the dough is stretchier, you know, it's more, it's better for cooking. Hmm. But what's happening is that when you go into um, the body, so you've got this fishing net, you've got this cell that's, you know, that's dividing the blood and the gut stuff. So what's happening is that you have these tight junctions in there which control what can go in, what cannot go in. But there is something called zonulin as well. And the gliadin and the wheat protein is actually making these tight junctions wider, more open. So things are mixing. Mm. So that's the problem with basically having the gluten. It's basically that the, our, glu uh, our, our wheat is mutated now. It's the yeah. short one because obviously it was the production thing. Exactly. Back in the days, it used to only grow during seasonally. So it was nice and tall and it was made and designed to be digested by our bodies. Whereas the small, short, stubby one is not actually designed to be digested no. by us. Right? And we've got, it's got too much of the protein, the gliadin yeah. protein. So it's too much going in. Yeah. And then just causing havoc. And especially if you've got celiac, okay, then you have to avoid it. But even if you're just normally healthy, it's just causing such destruction that we're seeing so much inflammation. And this inflammation is happening silently over time. So you start, you know, the baby's having it at a younger age. Then by the time, you know, someone's 20, they're suddenly coming up with these symptoms. You know, it makes so much sense because I like, I, okay, I don't have a gluten intolerance. Um, and yeah. you know this, obviously, but I don't eat gluten. And people often ask me why I don't eat gluten. And I'm like, look, you know, I just feel better in my body. I feel less bloated. Every time, like, mm. notice one thing. Every time you eat gluten, you feel bloated. bloated. You automatically feel bloated because that's doing something. It's causing some form of havoc in your body, maybe a small amount. Mm. But if you're doing it on a regular period, every single day, every single day. And with my kids, it's the same thing. I avoid giving them gluten. So my house is a completely gluten-free house. Love it. But then when they go out, it's like, okay, fine. They'll have it once in a while. So they're not deprived of it. Mm. But at home, I try to avoid it as much as I can because it's so important to try and instill these things in them from a young age. Otherwise, we're going to be causing havoc in their bodies when they're older. Exactly. Because you don't know what they're exposed to out there. Exactly. And it's all about choices at the end of the day. So if yeah. we teach them from home and if we teach them when they're younger making the better choice mm. they're, when they go out, when they are, you know, mm. out and you're not around, you know, when they're at a friend's birthday party or yeah. they will make the better choice. That's what we want them to do. Yeah. Right. And, you know, when, um, whenever I go out and then, and then someone says, Oh, you know, Hey, I'm having a pizza. Why didn't you have a slice? And I'm like, sorry, I don't eat gluten. And they'll be like, Oh, why do you have a problem? And I'm like, no, I actually don't have a problem. Mm. I just choose not to, but I don't like to get into the explanation of why I don't eat it. But then I always try to advise people and, and especially my own family, like my, my parents, my sister, all of them. I'm just like, guys, look, if you don't need to have it, if you can replace it, just replace it. It's not necessarily because it's causing 
it like, you know, because you're allergic or you have a reaction to it or you have such an adverse reaction to it. It could be that it's just a small reaction to it, but why even cause that small reaction? So guys who are listening to this podcast today, my advice and Shivani's advice is wherever you can, avoid gluten (laughs) well hopefully um so as a functional medical practitioner we're going back we're going Mm. off script so we're going to come back onto script now (laughs) this is what happens when you're having a chat with your friend right you just start talking about everything else but as a functional medical practitioner so you do the tests okay so you do these tests and then you you speak to your client and then what do you give them you offer them supplements you change their diet what do you do So with functional medicine, because we're getting to the root cause, so I will try and figure out what's going on. You know, there could be parasites, okay? So I would treat that. To treating the parasite, I would need to give them a supplement. Um, I would work on their gut. We would need to remove certain foods. I don't like to just give them totally an elimination diet for so many long periods of time. I don't really believe in doing that. I'll do Mm. it for a little time, but then we will start putting things back in. So we will remove the bad stuff, the, you know, if, if they're eating too much sugar. Sugar is one of the things that is so, so highly inflammatory. Yeah, actually um, sugar. Yeah. Sugar is, you know, one of the things. We will look at w- ways of good nutrition. What is nutrition? What, understanding it. Understanding how your body is connected. Like you could be having a migraine and that could be causing, you know, like your gut issues as well. Or your migraine could be caused by the gut issues. It's different things, causing different things. So supplements, looking at your lifestyle, looking at like movement. Are you, you know, working out? But how much? You could be overworking out as well. So it's Mm -hmm. not always the best thing. If you're a highly stressed person, like and your cortisol levels are high, you don't want to be going and, you know, overworking out because that's not going to help your body. Yeah, because so maybe, working out also causes inflammation, good inflammation, small but, amounts. Yeah, but. yeah. So we will look at that. We look at your sleep, like your circadian rhythm. It's so important to be having good, deep sleep, restful sleep every night. Women need more sleep than men. We need to be sleeping by you know, by latest, by 11 Right, 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 right. Women need more sleep than men. You heard it now. So you know, ladies, when you're listening to this episode, <laughs> tell your husband that. Remind him you need more sleep. <laughs> exactly. Well said. So sleep is critical. Um, social connections, you know, are you isolating yourself? Are you, you know, an introvert? You should be more of a, you don't have to be an extrovert, but are you having the right connections, spending your time with positive, uplifting people? Mm. So things like that, looking at all those different things that actually make up like life. It's a full 360. It is totally. It's a totally full 360, but I love that. And what about, what what are your thoughts on blue light and, uh, you know, maybe wearing blue light blocking, like how can somebody help improve their psychedic rhythm? So, okay, this is a very interesting topic because I love, like light is just a huge thing. So recently, have you noticed how we're just being exposed to like junk light sources? Like we have a lot of white light in our house. We have light from our phones, from the computers, from the TV. It's just constant, you know, the light there. So we need to reduce that because we are meant for sunlight. We need to have sunlight as our natural light. So once you start exposing yourself to blue light, what it does, it actually messes up with your photoreceptors in your eyes. And this is especially for like young children who are, you know, glued to the iPad all day or, you know, to the phone and the computer. It actually, and you know, the photoreceptors get spoiled. So then they can't take in light properly. Oh. So it's really important that everybody, I think, should be looking at the light first thing in the morning, especially sunrise, mm. midday a bit later, and even sunset, because we need to be having red and infrared light. Mm. Our bodies need it. Mm. The circadian rhythm needs it. Melatonin production, it all, evol- it all evolves around the sunlight. And if the- you're spending too much time indoors in an office... You need to expose yourself to sunlight because sunlight even makes your vitamin D in the body, in the skin. But now let's say if I can't, Mm -hmm. let's say I live in a place that, first of all, there is no sunlight, maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, like you're living in England in the winter and then you're working in an office and you are going to work at like six in the morning, Mm -hmm. the sun has not even come up. You're working in an office that barely has any windows and then you're leaving the office at like four or five o'clock when again, there is no, what, what would you suggest to somebody like that? What would they be able to do? So I would first say, okay, minimize, once you get home, like 
don't eat after sunset mm. actually don't expose yourself to artificial light as much as you can after that put on blue light blocking glasses yeah. after sunset everybody should be getting a pair even kids i think so yes i think maybe i should get my kids i wear them i wear them every yeah. day but um, and, my, and and every time i wear them this is the funniest thing as every time i wear them somebody from kisumu my parents or someone will come and go when did you get glasses and i'm like they're blue light blocking glasses <laughs> <laughs> they're fashionable exactly <laughs> we'll see a fashion trend soon i think we will yeah so but i think i'm going to get some for my kids i think i mm. think it's a good definitely start them off now because we are like having to live with artificial light you know late at night and after a sunset yeah. we don't did you know that if you eat or like if you eat a meal outside it actually reduces the insulin impact on your meal oh really so, like, so like just in just nature in nature just in the sunlight or just outside where you're still getting some kind of infrared light and you know like cuz windows block it mm So you need to be outside. You need to be walking in, you know, in nature, having fresh air. So all that is going to help. Mm. And then even just doing red light therapy, which is such a big thing now. So I yeah. definitely recommend it. Yeah, red light is the best. Yeah, and there's lots of different um, appliances that you can use, lots of different brands as well. So I think exposing yourself to red light is definitely And they're not expensive. Red lights are actually not expensive at all. My my brother was here the other day and he's so funny. He's like, "Oh, it looks like the red light district in here." And I'm like, <laughs> "Oh, yes, like, I saw, I saw this photo that you put up the yeah. other day." <laughs> and he's like, "What's up with this? You have a, now you have a red light, you have this." And I was like, "Yo, you'll you'll get there you'll one get day. There. You'll find it exactly." Yeah. Um yeah. so going back to so we've spoken about that. What about supplements? So supplements I think we all need to be having because we're not being exposed to enough like vitamin D we're all covered up we're spending time indoors mm-hmm. you know we're wearing sunblock most of the time the kids have to wear it at school sunblock so it's quite important And so important. the sun sun the, the sunscreen is blocking you from absorbing, absorbing it yes. vitamin D from the sun Yes yes and especially I mean I think the most important time to get your vitamin D levels up and is from the morning sun It is the morning Most, sun, exactly. Yes. So if you're up early, get them just to, you know, look at the sunrise and spend some time outdoors at that point. So I yeah, I definitely recommend supplementing, but obviously you need to be careful of your supplements because there's so many different ones, you know, available these days. Mm. Well, you need to check what the bioavailability is like. Use good good brands that are like clinician approved as well. Yeah, and this is the thing. This is why it's so important to have someone like you, a functional medical practitioner, tell you which ones to buy because otherwise you'll just go to healthy you and you'll pick any up or you go to any 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 supermarket or pharmacy and pick any supplement up. And this is why supplements have recently been given such a bad name is because mm. everybody and anybody is making it and then at the end of the day the actual nutrients quality in there is like nothing. Yeah, because they might be just putting lots of fillers in mm. there, you know, lots of may starch and other things. So it's really important to be using good quality supplement and supplementing, you know, on your testing. Like if your vitamin D levels are below 30 nanograms per milliliter, so below 30, definitely I would be supplementing. So what's ideally, good, yeah. I would say vitamin D needs to be at 70. Okay. Which conventional medicine, they don't recognize that. And you know, vitamin D is a precursor, it's a hormone that you need for so many functions in your it's a body. It's fat-soluble, right? So yes, exactly. Like so vitamin D, magnesium, all these things are so critical for the body to be, you know, functioning optimally or above optimally. Mm. So, okay, so we have vitamin D and if your vitamin D is lower than 30, then you want to be supplementing But it. But I would suggest supplementing, you know, a low strength and you build it up, not the 60,000 units that yeah, I see this people is the other taking thing once noticed. a week. I feel it's just too It's too big a dose and also you need to be going out into the sunshine and getting the natural vitamin D. Also the minute you go out into the sunshine, you get the natural vitamin D and then you take your supplement, you're also already you're also boosting the supplement because you've given it something to kind of like hang on to. Those 60,000 going back to those 60,000 ones, the once a week you can't absorb you can't physically absorb that 60,000 in one week it's not possible for you to absorb that in one week so vitamin d but to take something maybe something orally maybe like as a spray form or something like that might be better because obviously we know that 80% of our absorption is in the mouth 
Yeah, I prefer to take yeah oral. oral. I would not just say let's go for an injection because yeah. it's best just to take it orally. And then uh, magnesium. Magnesium. What yeah, kind because of it's magnesium? required for like over three hundred reactions in the body. So that's how important magnesium is. Wow. You need it for your mitochondria to make to, to produce ATP of a good quality. You need to have magnesium. So magnesium, you could take a supplement, or you could sit, you know, sit in the Epsom salts mm. for a few minutes every day, or use a topical one. And um, and what kind of magnesium would you suggest? Because there's so many different types. Again, yes. it's so confusing. So, of course, I'm not going to just say one off just because on the podcast. But, you know, if someone had other conditions, it just depends on what they have. It depends on what their needs are. Then exactly. you know which magnesium you need because there's Correct. the citrate. There's, there's so the many glycinate. different types. There's a, yeah, there's a threonate. There's so many. Yeah. You know, there's the oxide, which isn't that greatly absorbed. Mm -hmm. So that's like a waste of your money. Um, okay. Yeah. Interesting. And then omega-3 is really important, especially for young children, the developing brain, you know, the skin. We need to make sure everyone's having adequate amounts of this. And we're not, if you're not eating enough fish, then you could be, you know, you need to supplement. So you, you're saying that basically you'd only get your omega-3 from fish? Well, you have the vegetarian sources as well. There's algae, mm. algae sources, so you could be taking it in from that. But in most cases, it is low. From what I'm seeing in, my, in the testing that I do, it's low in so many people. And omega-3 is also a fat soluble, right? Yes. It's it's interesting because we have too much omega-6 in our body and we have too little omega-3 in our body. And but this is these are problems that are of this, like you know, why why were these problems never there in the past? Why were our parents or our grandparents, why didn't they have to worry about their omega-3 or their vitamin D or any of this? It's the food that we're eating. Really? It is the food, it's the way we're cooking, it's what we're using to cook our food with. It's, you know, it's, it's a combination of all of that. Yeah, yeah, it's the burden that is on the body and the the body's taking on all this toll. Exactly, yeah. Okay, going back to supplements. So I know I'm, I'm focusing a lot on supplements, but I think it's important for people to understand that there is taking supplements and overusing supplements, mm -hmm. but then making sure you're using the right supplements to help you in the right manner. Uh, what other supplement would you... Say, so you said, okay, so you said omega-3, mm -hmm. magnesium, vitamin D. Is there anything else, like maybe vitamin C or something so else that would be... Vitamin C is an antioxidant, which yeah. the body needs, because what happens is when your mitochondria are working very well, they're still producing something called ROSs. And these little molecules basically, you know, need to be, they're, they're a bit bad when they get in so many of them. So you need to come and mop them up. Mm. So how do you mop them up with an antioxidant? And an antioxidant is vitamin C. So I like vitamin C, you know, for us to be having it in fruit, vegetables, ideally your fruit. So taking it in through a nutrition source. But if you can't, so if someone's not very, you know, someone's not feeling great, they're not there, they've been sick for a long time, then ideally they should be supplementing it. Mm -hmm. But you need to check with your doctor. You need to check with your functional health practitioner. Not just always. take it otherwise. Don't just take it, you know, just because mm -hmm. you feel, oh, okay, I like that. I might just take that. She's taking it, so I might just take it. Mm -hmm. So don't just copy someone. Everyone is different. Like, and that's the thing about functional medicine. It's highly personalized. Mm -hmm. It's highly individualized. This podcast was created to inspire and connect with people. If you are liking the content of this podcast, hit the subscribe button, like, follow, and share this platform. Lots of love. So Shivani, we spoke a little bit about food, but I think we need to speak a bit more into detail about food. Like I do definitely believe that food is your medicine. Mm. And if we look at food, if we start to look and understand food as being our medicine, that we can change a whole lot just by doing just that on its own. What are your thoughts? You know what? I totally agree with you because food can be your medicine or it can be your poison. And, you know, food is actually information for your body. Every time you put in a food of, every time you put in a bite of food, sorry, you're either upregulating your body or you're downregulating your body. And I think that's something really important that everyone should be taking in. Yeah. You know, listening to that bit because um, food is actually cheaper than medicine. Food is, food is so powerful. And we all need to be eating. Yeah. So what we need to think about, where is our food coming from? What kind of soil is it grown on? How long did it take to get here? 
things like that, you know, which are really important. Like, why, why am I eating all day? Um, and also looking at eating food that's grown in your area. That's so true. Not, so eating locally, eating seasonally. You don't need to be eating food that is like grown somewhere, you know, eating a plum that was grown in Brazil. Because the interesting thing is plants don't move, right? Mm. Plants stay still and whatever information they're making is being held in that place. And that information is coming from the energy in that area, the latitude, the longitude, wherever they are. Now, if you're living in that area, you really need to be eating food from that locality mm. because that information is then going into your body. And I, th I think that's half the problem that we're having right now. We're eating out of season. Mm. And Ayurveda as well, you eat seasonally, right? Yeah. Even in Chinese medicine, like you're supposed to eat seasonally. So, and once you start eating locally, you will see the benefits. Because we're eating too many things that are like, you know, imported, exported, things like that. We shouldn't be. We need to be eating what is grown next to us. Yeah, what is growing, We, eat what you can grow in your own backyard, basically. Exactly, yeah. And what about, like, you know, when we say food is our medicine, this is talking about plants and fruits, but what about all the other stuff, the stuff that is um, highly processed? So highly processed foods. Oh, my God. Pujo, you got me started <laughs> on that. I feel like... <laughs> I How many times have me and you gone through this highly you know, processed food? <laughs> because, yeah, so what is the number one killer is sugar. Because and so sugar could be in the form of sugar or it could be in the form of flour, right? Like, you know, baked stuff, mm. things like that where you've got fats and you've got flours mixed together. So just mm. imagine when you eat that, you're causing such a high insulin spike. Mm. So what does all this do? It just, you know, you keep eating it all the time, over time, you're just gonna get inflammation. Yeah. And then your insulin receptors are not gonna work as much. They're not gonna react to this. Your pancreas releases insulin in response to the glucose that you eat. Yeah. But over time, that response gets reduced and then you end up with insulin resistance. So processed food has got so many things that you can't, like, you know, you take a box of something, and if it has like 10 ingredients, and no, normally the first one is the highest one, that's, in, you know, the highest amount of one. Yeah. If you see sugar, just put it down. And then you might see um, things like emulsifiers, and emulsifiers are highly dangerous for you. Emulsifiers are the EEs, yeah? No, so there are things that like, the carrageenan, so the things that make them like stick, that, that uh -huh. make them like, you know, bind together. So once you have an emulsifier in your body, it actually gets you going to have leaky gut. Oh. So it's so dangerous. But, you know, we don't always look at it because it's because we're li living in a society where we want everything at the clap of our finger. We don't have time to make things. Mm. So But we want these ready avoid, meals. avoid the processed foods. Just get, you know, buy everything from a supermarket that is not processed. Imagine if it has such a long shelf life that it's going to also have a very long shelf life in your body. Exactly. Yeah? We really it's need to be- common sense. It's common sense, but you But know, then you go to a supermarket and you go to the aisles and every single aisle is filled with chemicals, processed food, um, sugar, um, more sugar, refined oils, gluten, you name it. It's exactly. just filled with all of this and then the fruits and vegetables are left in one small and aisle. And they're just given one little corner. Exactly. Yeah. And I can see that. I'm not and then there's name, like one, but... these days all these supermarkets have this one section, it's called the health food section. It's like, no, call that the food section because exactly. that's the real, call it the real food so section. So once you start, stop, you know, once you start removing this yeah. processed food and tasting real food, you will reduce your sugar intake. You won't want to be having yeah, yeah, that yeah. sugar. You won't be You'd addicted automatically, to it. Automatically, yeah. you know, you're, your um taste buds taste buds exactly that's the word will start you know realizing what they really want exactly and but we need to hand this to our children because that's yeah. where you know they're the ones who are having all these food colorings and processed food and you know all these different things so it's just so important and and most people don't know this all these food items that you go and you find that they're, they're highly addictive food items and the reason why they're highly addictive food items is because that person that manufacturer actually went to a scientist and told him hey what can i put in here to make the person so addicted to it that his taste buds change and his mindset changes to become so addicted to this that every time he sees that packet 
or crisps or whatever it is, yeah. he, he reminds it. him of that taste. And it's like he gets that urge and they yeah. get, actually put chemicals in it to make you addicted to this stuff. This so it's a whole so psychological true. trap. Exactly. It's working on your dopamine. It's yeah. Like, so like MSG and we can still find it. I still see it in supermarkets yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we need to really start like looking into these things and becoming aware, making the choice. Yeah. Stop today and you don't need it. After 21 days, you won't need it. You know, you know honestly, stop having the sugar in your coffee. I see so many people putting sugar in coffee and I'm always like, I always tell them, just try it without it. Your coffee will taste so much better. You will enjoy yeah. the coffee itself. Do you, know the sh do you know the sugar, if you put sugar in coffee or even if you put milk in coffee, you're already losing the nutrients the benefit, in it. Yeah, exactly. The benefit. Even if you put milk in coffee, you've, in tea especially, you've yeah. lost the benefit of the thing. Except, obviously, nut milks are yeah. okay. Yeah. But the minute you put like dairy milk, that's it. Yeah. So well, what are you, what's your uh, take on dairy, actually? We haven't spoken about dairy. You know, I'm, I think it just depends on the person and who I'm treating. I really just don't like to remove everything. Mm. Um, Cause that can scare someone off also, it right? It can, exactly. So I just don't want to just be, mm. I'm quite mindful about what I'm going to say about that. Yeah. But I think using like ghee is amazing. It's so good for you. You can cook with it. You can do so many different things. Actually, ghee is probably the only thing I use in my house. Ghee and, and I use butter a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So I think, I think the butter we get is really nice and it's, you know, well, it's like grass fed butter. Yeah. Um, ghee is super, super healthy because it contains things metabolized that the old bacteria actually need. Oh. The short chain fatty acids that I, that I mentioned before. So it contains one called butyrate. Yes. And it's very good for your body. I know butyrate. Yay. Yeah. Butyrate is so important for your body. So uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you was about the red flags. So what are the red flags that I should be looking out for? But before we just go on to that, yeah. I just wanted to say eating a highly, so, you know, we talked about processed foods, yeah, yeah, the bad yeah. stuff, but what are the good things? Oh yeah, actually we haven't. I just we wanted to just yeah. mention that before yeah, I was yeah, still yeah. on the topic. So like the good things, um, so like eating a highly diverse diet mm. is what your microbes need. Your gut bacteria, your gut microbiota need a highly diverse mm. diet. So if you can eat... 20 different things every day in plant foods, this is amazing because the more diverse they become. So you don't want, you know, when I see the gut testing, I see someone and they've just got like, you know, eight types, that's it. They haven't got the other 20 because they're just limiting themselves to eating the same thing day in and day out or weekly rotations. So it's so important to eat your rainbow. So you need to eat your rainbow. Exactly. Yeah. So tell the kids, eat your rainbow. Like, eat you know, give them choices of three different orange foods, three different, you know, red foods and let them pick as well. And but also we don't eat enough fiber, right? We don't. We barely eat enough fiber. We're supposed to be having like 25 to 36 grams, but wow. we're not having that. And where does the fiber come from? Your vegetables. Yeah. It's so important. You know, I see a lot of people who are having, yeah, is it okay if I just take, you know, isabgul or... Something like that, yeah, like fiber, a fiber gel, gel every day. I'm like, no, it's actually not. You're not supposed to be doing that. Yeah. So eating a diverse diet, you know, having cruciferous vegetables like the broccoli, cabbage, kale family every day, a little portion mm. is so important because they, they contain glucosinolates, sulforaphanes. Mm -hmm. These are all anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory. Yeah. And, and, you know, broccoli sprouts are like concentrated in them. Yeah, exactly. So they're super healthy for you. So and then and then like having red, blue, purple colored vegetables contain anthocyanins, which are like anti-tumor as well. Good for your cardiovascular system. Good for your vision. Mm. So we need to be having all these good things, you know. Um, something I wanted to tell you as well was like, you know, things that grow like in very stressed, like highly... Uh, regions that are very stressful, like weather-wise, weather conditions, those plants are very beneficial mm. because they're stressed out. They have to grow in this really, you know, sort of like destructive environment. They can act, they actually become concentrated in all the good phytonutrients that our bodies need. And, 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 and that makes sense because mistletoe, for instance, mistletoe grows in all year round. It grows 365 days a year. It's the only tree that has leaves even in the winter. And mistletoe has been found to have such profound impacts on our body and our healing, especially when it comes to cancer. There's this whole book even written by uh, Dr. Nasha Winters and a few more oncologists on how mistletoe is so beneficial mm. for the healing of cancer. So 
You're right. It's so true. I didn't even think about it. So it's that. like even Himalayan tartary buckwheat, you know, which grows in the Himalayas. Yeah. But it's so good for you. Yeah. And I know there is like, you know, if you're living in the States, there is a farm that's growing it locally now. So mm. like how I said, you know, eating local mm. is good for you. Even shilajit which is, you know, found in the soil in the Himalayas. It's so, it's like got 30 different minerals in it. Wow. It's so good for you. Fulvic acid, humic acid, and, you know, all these different things that you need to have. So it's always good to eat things like, you know, a diverse diet. And I think eating organic is mm -hmm. so important. Eating organic because you just don't know what pesticides, what else has gone onto your food. Yeah, exactly. You don't know what has been So if sprayed. you can eat organic, please do. Yeah. Like, I'm like, you know, it, maybe it's more expensive, but just, you know, don't buy something else and spend it on what's going on into your body. Exactly, right? Yeah. Why spend money on something else? Spend money on good food, on good nutrition. So you know why, like, um, you know, strawberries that are organically grown, right? Yeah. So why are they so good for you? Because when they're, when they're organically grown, they don't have the pesticides put on, right? Yeah. So then you get all the, you know, the doo-doos and the bugs, they go into them, they eat the leaves. So then it eats the leaf and the strawberry will be like, okay, it's eating the leaf. I'm going to make more chemicals for it not to eat the leaf. So the strawberry becomes really concentrated in something called elegaic acid, which is actually good for us. Oh, so you wow. see, removing the pesticide is using the natural way of the chemicals. Because it has its own intelligence. Exactly. And in its own innate healing ability. So it's protecting itself. It's like yeah. creating And that gets passed on to you when you eat it. How cool. Yeah, and that happens with coffee as well, like yeah. organic coffee. It's very rare to find organic coffee, though. It is. Yeah, it is. So difficult. But mm. yeah, I do. I, I, I only drink organic coffee. If you can, coffee. have organic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as yeah. much as we can, it's really important to become more aware. And, and organic not only helps our body, but it helps the environment, too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. true. Exactly. And like toxin free, like so looking at your cookware, you mm. know, things like that. Whatever you're doing every day. Yeah, start changing that first. Change that first. Don't go, you know, go and buy an EMF mat right now. No, yeah. you don't need to. But just start removing things that you don't need, that you're yeah. using daily, which are not good. Exactly. And then making things better by doing better, of, you know, the, the good things more better. Yeah, yeah. No, that's so true. Um, I'm so glad you brought that up. So uh, you discussed that in one of your, you know, podcasts, the toxins. So yeah, exactly. I hope everyone has listened to that and taken it on board because it's just super important, especially for detoxification. Your liver is working around, you know, all, around all the clock, night, yeah. around the clock. So we really need to be ensuring to minimize yeah. what it has to detoxify. Yeah. And, and, and whenever it's needed to definitely detox the body for sure. Yeah. So the, uh, one of the other questions I want to ask you is, so mm -hmm. what are the red flag markers that we should be looking out for? Like, you know, when you do these tests and stuff, mm -hmm. what are the red flag markers do you think we should be looking out for? So, yeah, I would be looking out at low levels of vitamin D because whenever I see low levels of vitamin D, that person has been, you know, having a, an issue with their health. They're either getting a cold or a flu or something more substantial, more regularly. Definitely, mm -hmm. their immunity is low. And your immunity, remember, 80% of it is in your gut. Mm. 80% of your immunity wow. is in That's your gut, which is most of your immune systems. So if you're not looking after your gut, it's going to affect your immunity, it's going to affect your hormones, it's going to affect your detoxification and your mitochondria. So it's going to affect everything. It's going to affect everything. Yeah. So look at that. Look at um, your HSCRP, which is a high sensitive CRP. So if that is consistently high, then you need, you've got low level inflammation basically. Wow. So there is something inflammatory happening in the body. We need to go in and work on that. Start working on the gut, start working on what you're putting in, you know? Um, what else? Um, your HbA1c markers, you mm. know? Start looking at that. And if it's a pre-diabetic phase, then start working on that as well. Do you think everyone should have a functional medical pr practitioner? You know, it's so interesting you say that, but I think most people are heading that way. I have uh, my, my functional medical practitioner is my go to. I mean, I, I, I don't understand because why. they have the time to listen to you. The first consultation is about 45 to 60 minutes. It's yeah. not a 10 minute quick no, exchange. No, no. Mine was actually two hours long. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy that I mean, the number of things you got to fill in, yeah. understanding how everything's working. So yeah. it's just so important. Yeah. 
No, I agree with you. I think having a functional medical practitioner is so important and I think that's where we're headed. And yeah. this is why I'm so glad that one of my closest friends is a functional medical practitioner <laughs> and I get to have these amazing conversations with her. So uh, one of my last questions to you is, as a society, we do so many things well, but what are the things that we really still need to work on? Interesting question. So, you know, I think like, I think we've got nutrition mm. on a well control. Like generally, if I see all my patients, clients, they manage to get nutrition sorted out. And especially because living in Kenya, we're very lucky. We have a lot of good food, you know, we get like vegetables, fruits, all locally. Yeah. So that's great. But the other thing is, I think it's the other things that we need to be looking at. So like... What are your connections like? You know, your friends, are they really uplifting you? Are they positive? Are you spending mm. time in positive spaces? Are you doing things for yourself that are gonna help you? Like, are you meditating every day? Are you mm. doing a journal or a gratitude? And are you like saying thanks to your body for what it does? That's like one of the main things that people never think about, right? We just take it for granted that we're breathing, you know, every second of our yeah. life. But have you ever said thanks to your liver, for instance? Um, yeah, so it's, diff you know, stress, removing stress from your body. Yeah. Like, are you spending time in nature every day? Are you walking on that grass for 10 minutes a day? Yeah. Like, it's super important to be grounding and earthing yourself after spending, you know, a whole day in your office or, or busy wherever you are in your busy lifestyle. Are you eating your lunch without looking at your phone? Yeah, actually, true. So it's just those little mm. things where are you, you know, do you notice the butterfly's wings? Do you notice the flower that's just opened? Yeah. Things like that. I think we need to be more aware of it, spending more time in nature and appreciating the sun. Yeah. Like we need to be in the sun. It's so super important for the children. Yeah. And we need to appreciate our psychedic rhythm too. The circadian rhythm, exactly, because yeah. nothing else would work without our melatonin, dopamine, serotonin. Exactly. These are the hormones that are keeping you, you know, what you are. Like most depressed people will have very low serotonin, very low melatonin mm. and very low dopamine as well. Yeah. You know, you don't need to keep looking. At, we, we all post on Instagram or, you know, what Facebook, whatever it is, TikTok. But those dopamine hits you're getting yeah those are not the right ones you can get those from food mm -hmm. you can get those from different things are you having a hobby that gives you pleasure mm. are you doing something that does not involve other people as well doing mm. something for yourself doing something for yourself and like like you know like dr joe teaches us dr joe Dispenza, yeah. meditation it's not even just meditation it's actually a way of living your life don't you think it is it's you have to you know you have to change yourself in order for everything around you to change. You have to change yourself first and working with yourself and your mind, the power of the mind. The power of the mind. Yeah, the like we, we, so we both went to these retreats. Yes. And wasn't that just like the best thing you ever did? No, I'm so grateful to you for actually helping me <clears throat> to and making me go because you were one of the reasons I went to Cancun when I spoke to you after you went to London and you came back and then you were like oh it was amazing but you said to me go to the one in Cancun because I've been told that's the best one and then because of you I booked it and in fact the day I was booking it and I couldn't even book it I was calling you going oh yes, I can't I book it that. can you help me book it <laughs> and I know I'm, I'm, I'm honestly I'm so grateful to you for um for, for helping me actually go to his, uh, his retreat. It honestly it changed my life completely. <coughs> and uh, so grateful to have you as a friend. So I think <laughs> we're gonna end on that high note today. So thank you so much for coming <coughs> today and for um, sharing all your wisdom that you have. I mean, you've been always sharing it with me and I'm always so inspired by you and everything that you do. So thank you and always keep being so inspirational and so amazing as you are. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Thank you, love, for having me. It's been so nice. I'm so glad I have a friend that I can like share all these things that we're both so equally Relatable, passionate about. Right. You know? yeah. We can relate to this. We can discuss the latest, you know, um, <laughs> mushroom tea or something <laughs> <laughs> without being called. Okay, yeah. What are you talking about? Like, we yeah. Know, yeah it's and it's so funny. Whenever we're in our group, <coughs> me and you go into these conversations. Oh, have you tried that <laughs> supplement? Have you tried that? And everyone out around us is like, Whew. 
We have no idea what they're talking about when they're just doing their thing. <laughs> so I love it. No, I'm High so five. glad that you're doing this podcast. It's actually amazing. You know, you're just energizing and helping people because information is food, food for the mind. Exactly. And food for the gut as well. Knowledge so. is power. And that's why we are powerful women <clears throat> exactly. sharing it. Sharing and go with your gut. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, my dear.